more on the Blazers, and we had uh, locker cleanout day or exit interview day, whatever you want to call it, but everyone's speaking to the media at the Blazers facility. We heard a lot from Joe Cronin. We heard from Chauncey Billups. We heard from a few of the players. But we're talking about what this Blazers team's future looks like, and Cronin today talking about ways to be more competitive from a win-loss perspective, which, as we discussed last segment, we're not sure is actually what you want right now. So I, I we found out today that Chauncey Billups is going to be back. At least that's what Joe Cronin said right now. Sure. If, if you weren't going to bring him back, I think you'd probably say something like, we're going to evaluate things and 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 we'll ha- and we'll have discussions and then we'll do But it, by all accounts... He will be the guy who's back. Now, my question is whether he is the right guy for right now. Because when they brought Chauncey in, it was Dame's team. And it was to help try to lead a run behind Dame. That assignment has kind of changed and shifted. Now you're developing, guys. You're you're trying to be good for the next, essentially, run until you have the players to do so. And I'm not saying that he's not the guy for that, but I don't know that he is the guy for that. And maybe, like the, the text line says here, if you want to lose games... Maybe Chauncey is the guy to do that with this roster. I don't know that that's fair to him, but what say you on the head coaching position? I never know what to make of a coach that's in this situation. It's hard to evaluate. Well, one, injuries just riddled you. Two, you weren't rushing anyone back. I mean, you 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 sat guys ex- because the idea was that you you weren't going to win games. Yeah. And, you know, tanking is is a weird thing because. No one on the floor is trying to lose games. Never. When Scoot goes out, Scoot is playing his ass off, mm-hmm. with the exception of maybe eight and five time or two. He, <laughs> but no, eight had a really nice second half of the season. He I, did. I kid, right? Like DeAndre Ayton showed that he is a big time player when when he wants to be. Yeah. Post All Star break, he was great. Yeah, he he was fantastic. So it, it it's not as if you can ask guys on the floor to lose games, and you're not asking Chauncey Billups to go out and lose games. Like you're trying to win those. You know, like we saw that at times this year when when he would sit Scoot and he would play, you know, Brogdon, you know, at the end of games. And it was kind of one of those you're like, well, isn't the whole point of this to grow and develop Scoot Henderson? But you're sitting him at the end of games and you're playing Malcolm Brogdon. Like, it, that's, that's a weird thing. So how do I judge Chauncey Billups? I think it's almost impossible. Because you don't know what his assignment is, I, really. I don't know. Yeah. But, but I, I do know that he was brought in to be a defensive guy, supposedly. Mosley, and then he admitted that he's not a defensive guy, uh, and you're not good defensively. I, it's just it to me, it's very hard to uh, evaluate him. But I think when you look at at growth, even that's hard because you know Sharp had basically a wasted year right th- this year, and and he's a guy we don't know, but could he have come back at some point and, and see how much he could develop or? Are you so committed to making sure that he doesn't, you know, positively impact what you're doing out there I, that you just want to get him right? Yeah, you know, and then I look at uh, Simon's uh, has grown and developed. I, I don't know how much that has to do with Chauncey. He's a little bit of an older player. Um, I, I think Simon's showed a lot of, or not Simon's, but Scoot showed a lot of of growth towards the end of the year. Absolutely. Um, give him credit for that. I think Chauncey, if you want to give him credit, has done a nice job of of finding. And again, does that go to Cronin? But you know, you know, Banton and Murray and repair like there's, and, there, yeah, Kamara's yeah, been nice. Reith yeah, has been nice. There's some, you know, there's some pieces there that you look at and say, God, on on a real team with real like star players, you could fill out a nice roster full of that. Mm-hmm. So from that aspect, I I guess I give Chauncey credit, but until you give me a roster that can come close to being competitive. I guess the only way I have to grow him, uh, to, to to judge him is is there growth? I think there is, mm-hmm. and do they play hard? Yes. I think that's, that's. I think you can answer both of those questions very easily, and I think you're spot on. Yes. So I, t- to me, to fire him for what? Right. Because because well, what are you going to go do that's going to be markedly better at this point? Is and he, you don't. And if you don't want to be better, yeah, I, then why not let him keep, keep developing the guys he has? I have no idea if he's the coach long term, but. He, he has at least been able to to find uh, good minutes for nice role players that have shown you glimpses. Some of the young guys have taken some steps. No one's made leaps, but again, it's it's you know it's it's early, and the guys play hard. That's the one thing I don't feel like it, during this this three year run here where they have pulled the the cord two years and then this year was just they pulled it at the start of the season. I've never once seen the team. I can't say never once. Uh, there hasn't been any stretches where they quit. 
I agree with that. Yeah. I remember that East Coast trip where they just were just getting their teeth kicked mm-hmm. in. Like that's embarrassing. But some of that is a product is your roster sucks yep. and injuries. And, I mean, just the amount of players you have available those nights. Sometimes. They they play hard, and as long as you haven't lost the locker room, I see no problem keeping Chauncey Billups, and even next year. And that's the weird part about rebuilds is how do you evaluate when the mission isn't to win. And you bring up an interesting point. He's still got the locker room. And Malcolm Brogdon, who did not play really at all the back half of the season with elbow tendonitis, which I think was a nice way of saying we're not going to let him go out there and get more injured. He could be a nice trade piece next year. Sure. But he's a veteran guy, a point guard, uh, a, a team first guy who has played for the Bucks, the Pacers, and the Celtics. And in his, his exit interview today, he said that the Blazers locker room is the best one he's been in. I'm always a little bit perplexed when yeah. when, when you find out that a locker room is really good for a really bad team. <laughs> because it's like, do you guys care enough? Or is it like, do you have enough, is there enough like fight and ferocity and, and, and things like that? And on one hand, I say, well, that's great. I'm, I'm glad that these guys that are terrible are still finding a way to like get through it and, and be there for each other or whatever. But I'm also like a little bit alarmed. Like, should it be that great of a locker room? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I find the whole Malcolm Brogdon thing bizarre because he seems to like want to be like here. love it here. He's a six man. Nothing like, wrong with loving it here in Portland, but for but, what he came from, championship teams and to th- yeah, it's, yeah, it's odd. And he knows that they're nowhere near. Like you're light years away from being any sort of real contender, and yet he seems content. Yeah. So I. Hell, man, that one, that's one of those head scratchers, but maybe he's just a different cat that enjoys, uh, again, enjoys kind of a young locker room, and uh, that's that's a positive, right? That's another reason. Like, if, if, if guys who are coming to your team and are new like it here and want to be here, Aiton says he likes it here now. Like, a- Aiton said he felt like this could be a spot for him. It, it, he felt that at the end of the season yeah. that he was kind of coming into his own here. Well, and then, then maybe there is something to what Chauncey's doing behind the scenes is better than uh, – Better than the on-court results would lead you to believe. 